Hey, welcome to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. Well, we're out here in my garage. I want to kind of show you our next project. I picked this up today at a yard sale for, if you can believe it, $125. And this was the second day of this sale that I happened upon this. So hundreds of people walked by this. This is a Hamaker Schlager, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, antique woodworker's workbench. <clears throat> I don't know how old it is. The gentleman I bought it from was in his 60s, and he tells me it was his dad's, and he remembers it when he was a child. So that'll give you some idea. It goes back at least to the 50s. I would imagine probably a generation before. It was kept in his dad's uh, woodworking shop for many years, but then it was moved to his father's machine shop, and it got a lot of uh, stains and wear there. Now, a lot of people like this kind of patina, but if you look at these legs, this leg assembly, you can see it's aged as silver gray. That's from dampness, and I don't much care for that. Plus, every joint here has come loose. So we're going to start a restoration on this table, and we're going to try to keep it looking old, but it's going to be clean and it's going to be serviceable. And if, <laughs> if you know me, I'm going to keep this one. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I'll find a spot for it. So I'm going to bring you along. This will be a really interesting restoration. We're going to start with the legs, and eventually we'll get to the, uh, the tabletop. I'm really excited about this. I consider it an honor to have this. I'm very, very lucky to have found it. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to use it, and we're going to treasure it here at the shop. So stick with us. This should be lots of fun. And here's the leg assembly in the shop. And I stripped off this color. It actually turned out to be paint. It came right off with acetone and rag. This appears to be maple. I might be wrong, but that would be what I would assume that this would have been made out of. And that's the nut and bolt that hold the stretcher assembly to the leg assembly. You can see it's, it's old, it's iron, and it's rusty. And here's the fastener in the front of the legs. And there's the leg assembly from the side. And as you expect, most of these joints are loose. They're mortise and tenon. So I say let's knock it apart and get a better judgment of what we got to do. I've sprayed these rusty bolts with some penetrating fluid. In this case I use PB Blaster. Let's see if they'll come out. This one's fairly loose. I wonder if this uh, table had been stored, broken down, and, and then just lightly reassembled before it was sold. Because these, these bolts surely looked like they were going to give us a fight. And there's one of the bolts. The nut's still in there. I'll pull it out. But uh, let me get all four of these pulled out of here. And the bolts were pretty loose. Well, here they are. I'm going to spray them down with crud cutter. I found that if you get the grease off of these the best you can before you put them in a vinegar bath, the vinegar bath works much better for the rust removal than when they're, when they're dirty. So I'm going to spray these now, let them sit for a little while with crud cutter on them, wipe them off, and we're going to drop them into a bath of vinegar, regular household vinegar, and let them sit overnight, and that'll take this rust right off of them. And this is just regular household vinegar. It's dark because I've used it before to de-rust things. You can use it over and over again. And I'm just going to take our bolts, and I'm obviously going to take the nut off and the washer so they vinegar can get to it, and just lay them right in here with their parts right next to them. I'll put all four in here, close this up. We'll let this sit overnight. Let's see about knocking this thing apart. Let's get these joints cleaned up. Okay, all the pieces have been stripped, rinsed, sanded. They're all ready to be stained. I'm going to stain them in an Andover maple. We'll see how that looks. That's the next step.
Oh yeah, I like that. That's gonna be nice. Okay, let me get up to stain and all this stuff. I'm pretty happy with that. And let's see how our uh, hardware did in the vinegar. And it actually came out pretty well for just a short soak. I'll finish them up on the wire wheel and then we'll be done with the, uh, with the hardware. Not too shabby. Okay, three more to go. Well, I sure think those look mo' better. They're ready to go. <clears throat> okay, we've got all the pieces stained. All the prep work is done. It's time to join them back together with glue. We're just going to glue the leg assemblies together, not the stretchers. The stretchers are removable with those uh, long bolts. And we'll leave that the way it is so if this ever has to get knocked down, it can get knocked down. So for the glue up, I have some help. I have my grandson Preston. How old are you, Preston? Eight. Preston has his own YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the description if you'd like to subscribe. He's working very hard with his YouTube content to try to build up his base. And this is my granddaughter. Her name is Charlotte. How old are you, Charlotte? One. Three. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> One. And she's going to help too. All right, time to glue this up. Let's go. that segment that meant a lot to the kids I think it's really important that uh, that kids get exposed to to the crafts to the vocations early on so they're comfortable in the shop they understand how things go together I think it's a big part of growing up so if you are a maker or a fixer or whatever bring the kids along they'll appreciate it and it's a good thing to do okay our frames are glued up Everything has been sanded, stained, repaired, fixed. Just leave these to set overnight to harden up. And tomorrow we will start on the workbench itself. Good day. See you tomorrow. Good morning and welcome back. Whew. It's a great weekend with the grandkids. But man, do they tire me out. They're back home, everything's well, so that's great. We had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that little clip I had with the with them helping me glue the glue the legs together. Alright, I wrangled this beast of a top in here. We're ready to get started on it. The legs are ready to be reassembled. We'll do that first. So the next step for us is to assemble this frame and then get it set aside and then we'll start on the uh, on the workbench top itself. So here we go. Okay, these, these uh, leg frames are rock solid now. The cross pieces are ready to go in. I'll bolt them in place with the bolts that we cleaned up, and then I'll bring you back and show you what the stand looks like. Then we'll move the stand out of here, get working on the top. 
And our base is all done. I think she came out great. And for all you anal retentive people out there, yes, I lined up the bolt head so they're all facing in the same direction. See? Okay, let's move this out of here and get working on the top. And I want to document the condition that this top is in before we get started in it, or started on it. You can see this crusted stuff. There's paint all over it. It's pretty rough, but let's get started on it. Okay, the carts or the uh, <clears throat> tabletop is set up on the cart. It's outside. I'm going to strip everything. I'm going to use stripper on everything, take all the paint, the dirt, and hopefully some of the grease out of this thing. So you can see we got a hell of a job ahead of us. I think I'm going to scrape this table off before I put the stripper on the next section. There is a lot of oily crud on this table. I'm going to be here a while. Scraping that top was definitely the right thing to do. You can see there just a portion of the crud that came off of there. Okay, now let's try to strip it down. Well, it's starting to look like a bench. It's about an hour and a half's worth of stripper and scraping and picking. And This was definitely in a machine shop. There was lots of uh, grinder dust, lots of oil. I think we're getting it. If you see a lot of these dark spots, that's where the stripper has soaked in. But the next step here is to uh, spray this off with some water, wipe it down, flip it over, and take a look at the underside. And in order to clean out the bench dog holes, I'm just taking a half inch chisel and gently running it down inside, knocking off any of the crud. And these holes don't open up to the underside, so once this dries, I'll blow it out with compressed air. But that's how I'm taking care of these. And you can see it's the same kind of stuff. It's years of machine shop crud. We'll get it out. And while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm just taking a pick and running it through the seams that are open to pull the last of the dirt out. I'll decide what I'm going to do with these open seams later. We got her flipped upside down. It's nowhere near as bad as the front side. You know, we've got some paint and some other things that need to be cleaned up. And we can see we're going to have to take these bolts off to remove this vise if that's what we choose to do. Every one of the bolts on this table that hold the vices in are rusty. So either we'll take them all out and remount the vices or we maybe just take them out one at a time, clean them up and put them back. But uh, this shouldn't take too awful long to get this backside taken care of. So let me get to it. This collar should be in two pieces. This one's in three. It's been broken before, but that collar retains the wood, the screw that uh, works the clamp. So the whole thing's going to come off. It's going to go get dunked in some vinegar, and we'll get it polished up and painted before we put it back on.
Looks like we got a little cleaning to do in there. And then we're going to uh, take these bolts one at a time to the wire wheel, clean them up, and get this all put back okay, together. Okay, taking the opportunity to take all of the bolts and lag screws out of this out of this end of the table and polish them up, get the rust off of them, and then I cover them in fluid film to keep them from rusting again. We have the vice assembly on the bench. I'm going to clean it up, sand it, take care of all the issues with it that I can find, and then we'll reinstall it. Okay, the vice is all cleaned up. I've got the, the vice screw here is heavily waxed. Let's see if we can put this thing, let's see if we can put it back together. And then we've got to do this one as well. I'm going to do this one off camera, but basically these bolts come off, the assembly comes off, take off the collar just like we did before. I'll clean it up just exactly like we did before. And then I'll pull these two bolts off the side, clean these up, reinstall everything. And uh, the underside of the table will be done. Okay, we've got both vices cleaned up and reassembled. The bottom, the underside of the uh, workbench has been cleaned, it's been sanded, it's been reassembled. So what I'd like to do, since it's starting to rain outside, is just get some color on the underside of the of the workbench. We'll leave it overnight. Tomorrow we'll be able to flip it over. We'll do the final work on the top that needs to be done and color that. So here we go. Same color as the base and over maple. Okay. Okay, that was a great day's work. We got an awful lot done. This project uh, seemed almost overwhelming at one point, but it made great, great progress. It's pouring rain out right now, so we're going we're gonna to call it. We've got color on the underside. Tomorrow we'll flip it up. We'll sand the top. We'll do any repairs that need to be done, get some color on that. And I've got a, a different finish that I'm going to put on this that I'll share with you. I'll show you how I do that uh, as we move forward. And then once this is all done, we'll put the legs back on it. Flip it back up, and we're going to put this old girl back to work. So listen, I appreciate you sticking with me today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll keep working on this thing. Take care. Bye. And I decided to paint those plates tonight so they'll be dry for tomorrow. Just basically ran them through the wire brush, got the rust off of them, and then hit them with some uh, spray paint. Two of the screws that held those plates in were actually broken where one side of the screw where the you know you have the slot one side of the screw snapped off it was a real adventure getting those out of there but unfortunately i looked through my hoard and i had two screws just like this old ones so they're uh, they're going to go on with that tomorrow but you can see this one had broken again it should be two halves this half had broken in half somebody had drilled an extra hole to mount that which is which is fine because uh, the vice won't work without that collar so it's been a good day. Be at it. We'll be back at it again tomorrow. Good morning and welcome back. I intended to shoot this uh, scene in front of the table, but the sun shining through the window and the lights all messed up and whatever. Anyways, our base is done. Uh, I put some polyurethane on the underside of it to keep water penetration from the feet of the legs, and I put a coat of finish on it. We're going to talk about that finish a little bit later. I also came in this morning and I took some, uh, made some thin maple sh strips on the bandsaw, sanded them down and filled in some of the cracks on the table that uh, were there. I tried to close them up with a the clamp, they wouldn't move, and rather than run the risk of busting anything, I just decided to fill them. I did that very early this morning before the sun came up and didn't have the camera, I'm sorry, but I'm going to bring you in and kind of show you what I did, so let me show you. And if you can see, here's a little piece of maple. There's another piece of maple here. Any place there was space, I filled it in with some epoxy putty. And then where there was, wasn't was really enough space to get a shim in, 
I used epoxy putty and I just did these pieces here. So we are, we're ready to start sanding this beast down. I very, very seldom use, I very, very seldom use a belt sander. I, usually way too aggressive for the kind of work I do, but I'm gonna start with a belt sander to knock some of this stuff off and then we'll go from there with the uh, random orbit. So we gotta go back outside, get set up and I'll bring you along. Okay, we're getting ready to get started. Don't forget this. Okay, using both a belt sander and the uh, hand plane, I've got this pretty well flat. You can see there's low spots here that are stained. Now some of these are just very, very, uh, just very, very slight undulations and it's really just oil stains that are there. But they're like right here, this is an area that's a little bit low. And I really don't want to take all the wood off to make that match. I'm just going to deal with this little low spot. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take this down a sixteenth of an inch, the whole length of it. So I'm going to break out the uh, random orbit sander and start to smooth this down and see how we do. Well, I think we've got this table about as good as we're going to get it. We have this area here where oil is just soaked in and it, it's not going to come out. I, I've used mineral spirits. I've used a uh, crud cutter. We've used stripper, it's just not going to come out. And there are some other spots where they are oil stained. But in general, we got most of it, most of it off. And I don't think there's anything left to do now but put some color on it. So let's do that. Here it is with stain on it. I think it's gonna look good. Okay, the stain's been on here for a couple hours. I think we're ready to put some uh, finish on it. My decision was to go with a traditional wax and oil finish. I don't want any kind of a hard finish on this table. It's gonna be worked on. So what I did is I made a traditional finish by mixing equal parts of beeswax, boiled linseed oil, and mineral spirits. So one third of each. I melted the beeswax in a double boiler, then I poured in equal parts of boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits, stirred it, let it set, it solidifies into a soft paste. Kind of like that, and it just goes on, you just rub it in. So that's what I'm going to be doing, working on putting some, fin or some finish on this. Well, it's got its first coat of beeswax finish on it, and this is exactly the look I was hoping for. This worn, reddish-brown look of an antique that has just been worn from use for years and years and years. You may notice that there's a handle on this vise now. I made this on the lathe. My lathe skills are atrocious, so I didn't want to. I didn't film that. Uh, nobody needs to see me struggle with that tool. I'm still learning it. But there we go. I'm pretty happy the way this looks right now. And the tool tray. I think it looks really nice. Right, I'm gonna let this set. The sun should be around the corner just a little bit. Let the sun melt that wax right into the uh, raw wood, and then we will try to get this thing mounted back on its legs and call it a, call it done. Well, she's all done. She's back on her stand. Ready to go back to work, and she's going to be working right here. I just love this thing. I feel very, uh, 
I feel very privileged to own this. Well, anyways, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care and remember, it's just wood, color, and some shiny stuff. See you next video. Bye. Oh, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>